So the next what we're going to learn as part of the regulation uh, is something which is very interesting topic is called as corporate governance. Even though it, when we hear the term corporate governance is kind of sounds boring, but there's a lot of stories behind how corporate governance came into existence. Over the past, uh, you know, 20 years or 30 years of time, there have been ma various major scandals that have happened like out there in the world. Uh, there is a big bank called as Bering Bank, which are actually taken down by one single person um, and which was in Singapore. Uh, there's a UK bank. Then um, there was uh, companies like uh, Carillion, uh, which had downfalled, uh, which very recently over the last few years, if you go back, there have been like scandals like Robert Maxwell, which has happened in UK. The BCCI scandal, not the cricket committee, but rather there is a bank called as BCCI, which actually was identified as a money laundering institution and as well as they were identified as a fraudulent company and ter funding terrorist organizations. Polypec is another scandal which actually blew out the requirement for a stricter regulations for the public limited companies because ultimately who gets penalized it's the public who gets ultimately get hit because of certain group of individuals uh, who perform these kind of scandals or frauds so uh, during 1990s and 1980s um, there were a lot of scandal that actually led to a lot of downfall or bankruptcy of various big conglomerates or corporates in uk and i've already told you about these examples and because of that uh, you know, the UK government gave, uh, assign, uh, appointed an expert of conglomerate, which is Cadbury, Sir Adrian Cadbury, to come up with a report which will help to govern these organizations and ensure that, uh, ensure that too much power is not vested in a very small uh, group of individuals, like either in one single person or in a group of individuals, they should not have too much power vested in them. So the Adrian Cadbury, Sir, Sir Adrian Cadbury came up with the Cadbury report. The Cadbury report then went to the Greenbury in 1995, went to the Hampel in 1998, then came up the Higgs review. Uh, in 2005, there was a revised tribunal guidance that came up, uh, which established certain principles of the code. Then came up in 2010 is the UK's corporate governance codes the uk's corporate governance code which was established in 2010 and this uk's corporate governance code was taken primarily from the oecd principles like the oecd principles is part of the g20 committee the g20 summit um in the year 2023 the g20 was established uh, was conducted in uh, in in india in new delhi perhaps so g20 have an establishment called as the oecd uh, which oversees and governs the uh, and helps to establish control requirements for corporate companies, like major corporate companies. They establish governance and as well as advices to the corporate companies across the globe. So all the uh, countries are part of the OECD establishes principles which will help to govern these corporate companies because ultimately if the corporate companies are not governed, they can manipulate and conduct fraudulent activities which will impact the uh, the ultimate individuals or the the countries uh, countries uh, citizens and this will in fact affect the government so end to end to, uh, to ensure those things doesn't happen they have come something called as oecd principles this oecd principles was the primary uh, primary uh, basis which was established to uh, for the UK's corporate governance code. Then there was a boardroom diversity, risk and viability, you know, audit updates like which actually gave certain updates to the UK corporate governance code. And ultimately in 2017, there was a big corporate governance code comprehensive review that was conducted. So um, as I told you, the co corporate governance was established for Primarily what reasons because of too much of power being vested in a group of small group of individuals who can take decisions freely in a company Now even though the company is actually invested by public like the general public invest in this company only very few Individuals who are part of the management takes up the decisions due to which lack of uh, you know proper decisions or lack of governance 
um, frauds gets committed because they have huge chunk of money with them they go and uh, do whatever they want to do and uh, hence uh, either there is uh, the company fails or the there is uh, uh, there is frauds that happen uh, because of the lack of controls and systems of governance in place so that's where the as a response to the you know these scandals UKSFRC came up with this quote corporate governance quote now the OECD principle was a major benchmark which was established a uh, major benchmark for the UK's corporate governance codes the o OECD full form is organization for economic cooperation and development it produced a six principles six major principles for corporate governance to policy makers when setting regulations for their own country so they gave advices like in a six principle area in six major principle or in six areas they advised they advise the policy makers to set their own regulations by taking up this six principles. Uh, what are their principles? Number one, ensuring the basis of an effective corporate governance framework, right of shareholders and key, uh, key ownership functions, equal treatment of shareholders, giving responsibility for the bo board, disclosure and transparency and role of stakeholder in, uh, in a corporate governance. So these were the major principles which were established uh, through which the corporate governance were code were implemented the corporate governance code themselves were established uh, with these principles and there are five major heads they are divided into five major heads i'm not going to go very much detail into each of them but the five major heads are number one board leadership and company purpose firstly the company or the public limited companies should have a leadership board and uh, they, they need to have a com uh, company purpose they need to have a company purpose. Uh, the second is composition, succession and evaluation. So this is more or less, you know, related to the board. Like composition talks about who can be part of the board, how they have to be regulated, how they have to be overseen, etc. Board leadership and company purpose talks about the effective and entrepreneurial board, like who can be part of the board. Like, uh, uh, you know, the board have to, when they are, establishing the purpose they need to look at just not from the shareholder perspective not to just increase the wealth of the shareholders but also to improve the stakeholder perspective as well give improvement to the stakeholders ensure that there are necessary resources in place and one major thing in terms of the board leadership is that the ceo the chief executive officer and the chairman have to be two separate individuals they cannot be the same which is also established in division of responsibilities as well. The composition, succession and evaluation talks about um, what are the processes and who can be part of the board and uh, there have to be rigorous and transparent procedures which has to be established through which the board are formally monitored. Board and committee have combinations, they should have combination of skills, experience as well as uh, knowledge and every year the board members have to be evaluated like if there is a board member who's not doing anything he have to be evaluated and he have to be thrown out of the board of members that is what the composition succession and evaluation talks about the co go governance code also gives division of responsibilities like the chairman will lead the board the ceo the management have to be separate individuals the chairman and the management have to be two separate individuals the board uh, should include equal number of executive directors and non-executive directors. So the board, if there are six members, three of them should be executive, three of them should be non-executive directors. So executive and non-executive directors, so uh, non-executive directors should be comprising of the board. It cannot be just executive directors who takes uh, who takes part in the day-to-day -day management. There should be equal number of non-executive directors who are there to oversee the executive directors. They have to be supported, the board have to be supported by company secretaries, proper policy uh, information and time and resource should be there. There should be nomination committee. A nomination committee is a committee which is established within the board of directors who will select uh, who should be the board of directors. The nomination committee will in fact select the, uh, the chairman. The nomination committee uh, can in fact select the various other board members various board of directors the executive directors as well as the non-executive directors so the nomination committees in fact they select the various other board members as well and and if 
the after the annual evaluation if the nomination committee feels that okay you know what uh, a board member is not functioning properly he can be removed from the board by by voting by the board members and then uh, a new board member can be appointed then there is something that is called as audit risk and internal control so there is a nomination committee which is established to select the board members there is an audit committee which oversees the audit function the risk of the company and the internal controls of the company so audit committee should be a separate committee which is established as part of the uh, within the board of directors and the audit committee should comprise only of non executive directors and they should oversee the audit risk and internal controls so as an auditor we are supposed to reach out to the audit committee as well to redress if there are any issues let's say with the management or if there are any independence related matters as well we can reach out to the audit committee the board needs pay right the board needs salaries they need uh, pay they need money so the remuneration committee is established which designs like what is the process uh, of remuneration that should be given um what kind of remuneration can be given to give you an example the non executive directors can be given only uh, remuneration which are uh, based on their uh, based on their contribution they uh, you know a, a fixed salary only can be given but performance related pay or company's profit share cannot be given or even the shares of the company cannot be given to the non executive directors when establishing a remuneration you just not can, should not be thinking about just the board uh, board of director himself but also all people uh, which who are working for the company all employees have to be taken into consideration when establishing remuneration for the board of directors just imagine for example if there is a employee who is actually not getting paid or his salary is being cut down to half but there is a board of director whose salary is increasing double or triple uh and the reason why the employee salary is cut off is because let's say the company is not doing well but even when company is not doing well the board of directors should also not be earning that much right because he is technically is also part of the employee so it is not equal treatment so equally uh, they should be treated according to to them as well so the major committees that is established which we have to learn is remuneration committee nomination committee and the audit committee remuneration committee says that there should be at least 3 non executive directors it doesn't say uh, uh, it should not comprise of executive directors at all there should be at least 3 non executive directors but the chairman cannot be the chair of the committee like it cannot be the chairman who will be chairing the committee uh, they need to promote the long term growth so which means uh, not just focusing upon giving salaries but as well as uh, securing money for the long term mission of the company non executive directors have uh, cannot have share options or performance related pay nomination committee is majority of the non executive directors there could be uh, executive directors as well they establish a process to nominate the board members on board appointments and all directors are subject to an annual election at least 3 years externally facilitated notice of contract should be less than 1 year so notice of contract period of less than 1 year so all directors are subject to an annual re-election or evaluation so at least 3 years they are externally fa uh, facilitated like after 3 years they have to be uh, you know thinking that okay whether someone externally can be brought for the board of directors etc audit committee says that it, it should only have 3 it should complete comprise of 3 at least 3 non executive directors and at least one with a finance experience The responsibilities include oversee the audit division, uh, oversee the internal audit and the internal review. Uh, they have to review the financial statements and provide advice to the executive directors on the financial statement. Uh, talking as a liaison between external auditors and the management to come in between and to ensure that they are functioning properly. Review the effectiveness of external audit to ensure that the external audit are functioning smooth. The audit committees are also established. so here i have summarized the major responsibilities of the audit committee so there are summary of nine responsibilities for an audit committee what they do on a day to day basis so firstly is that uh, they have to uh, review review monitor the mo and monitor the independence and objectivity of the auditor so the auditor have to be independent and have to be objective and 
whether the auditor are independent and as well as are they objective have to be monitored by the audit committee of course the audit committee have will have a say in the remuneration of the uh, auditors and the terms of engagement of the external auditors are also uh, overseen by the audit committee appointment reappointment and removal of auditors they do have a say they take into consideration how the auditor when the auditor have to be appointed uh, when are they reappointed and if they required they are removed as well safeguard the privacy of the whistleblower um, whistleblower are someone who actually um, brings out if there are any frauds or uh, unethical practices happening in a in a company so to to promote that and to ensure that such um, such individuals do uh, uh, such individuals are there and to ensure that they are protected uh, you know uh, the audit committee have to safeguard them because a majority of the time if let's say for example there is someone who knows there is something fraud happening he might not come out with the senior management or they may not come out to the board and speak out because they are afraid of their management because management might throw them off from their job in one day so to ensure that his job is protected and they are safeguarded uh, and if there are fraud cases which is done by their management or their seniors etc to protect them uh, the audit committee needs to establish the privacy and safeguard a policy where whistleblowers can come out and speak out if there are fraud fraudulent activities happening in the company need for internal auditor uh, and if required to consider one so if there is internal auditor the internal auditor's function have to be overseen and if there is no internal auditor whether it is required or not have to be um, have to be checked by the audit committee to monitor review and effectiveness of the internal audit department so the internal audit department have to be monitored and their effectiveness have to be reviewed review the internal control and risk management of the company and of course uh, to check the financial statements and monitor the financial statements um, and as well as uh, if the financial statements are uh, are going in a declining situation then have to be advised uh, to the management uh, stating that their financial statement doesn't look good and advice on that as well implement policies on supply of non audit services by the external auditor technically the external auditor you know if they got a client as an external audit client they in and if the auditor have other divisions as well like for example valuation services or other non audit services the external auditor will have a tendency to sell them to the same client itself uh, because it's a more revenue for the auditor right so so if such situations are there there could be ethical issues which we will learn in chapter 2 in detail so the audit committee needs to oversee whether uh, an auditor who is providing audit services is not providing non audit services to the client or if they are providing they are safeguarded properly and well so that is the major summary as well as the responsibilities of the audit committee and with that uh, we have concluded on the corporate governance part now let's move on to the main topics for this chapter which is money laundering uh, and what are the money laundering offenses and how what are the guidances with respect to money laundering